what up YouTube, this is Supercharged iOS, and this is my full review of the Satoshi Smart TV Box. The Satoshi Smart TV Box has a quad-core 1.8 GHz CPU, 2 GB of DDR3 RAM, 8 GB of internal flash, and dual antennas for excellent Wi-Fi reception. It's also made entirely from aluminum, top and bottom, which means it's very durable and it looks great next to other popular devices. On the back of the device, it has one Ethernet, one optical audio, one HDMI, and one AVI audio output. It also has an OTA output for flashing the device. On the side panel, it has two USB ports and a standard SD card slot. The included remote control is great for streaming from XPMC as well as over the network and for surfing the web. So let's start my full review of the Satoshi Smart TV Box. This review is going to cover everything from how fast apps are downloaded to how well they perform to XBMC performance as well as upload and download speeds and Antutu benchmark statistics. First thing we're going to do is we're going to run a test using Antutu benchmark. We're going to test the CPU, RAM, GPU, graphics processor unit, and the internal operating system. So basically we're going to test the major components and workings of the device strictly by the numbers. So I'll go ahead and click on test and get the test started and I'll see you guys as soon as it's finished. Alright, now the test is complete and as you can see these are the ranks of the most popular Android devices. The fastest one being the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 which ranked at almost 35,000. So we'll go ahead and scroll down just until we find ours, which will say my device. And there you go, there it is. The score is 18,594, which is very impressive. As you can see, the Galaxy Note 2 is just a little faster, and the Samsung Galaxy S3, which is just last year's model, is slightly slower than this device. So this device has an excellent score by the numbers. Go ahead and click on details and show you the final score. And we can look at what exactly was tested and a breakdown of it. And as you can see right here, everything looks like it scored really well. I haven't really seen a device of this kind test this well before. So this is a big plus for the Satoshi Smart TV box in my opinion. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little more. And we'll check the 2D and 3D graphics was tested. It was tested at 1280 by 720 which is 720p. But that's not really a big deal to me. I'm really satisfied with this device and the outcome couldn't have been better. And here's a little more information about the device. You can see the CPU is a Rockchip RK3188 on Cortex A9. And the operating system is Android 4.2.2. And here is the graphics processor unit, which is a Mali 400 MP. It's tested at 720p kernel. And we'll scroll down a little bit more and you can see the RAM is currently 12.91 of the 1,874 megabytes, which is almost two gigs. The Satoshi Smart TV Box has one of the best interfaces that I've seen on a device of its kind. It's very usable. You can flip through it very easily, and there's several different categories that you can store things in. You know, it's, it's a lot better. It's a lot easier and more convenient for you to find what you're looking for. All the apps are right there. You just go to all apps. And it's got a cool interface even for where the apps are located. And unlike many other devices, you don't need a mouse and keyboard to use this device, which is really convenient for most people who want to use it with their television and would like to use it with a television style remote like comes with the device. Another great feature about the Satoshi Smart TV box is that it's full HD 1080p by 60 frames per second. But when you get it, it's going to be on 720p by default. So you just go to setup and then go to display, navigate over to HDMI resolution. And when you see this, if your television is 720p, just go ahead and leave it on 720p because that's what will be on by default as soon as you hook it up the first time. But if you're on 1080p display, just go ahead and bump that up to 1080p by 60 frames per second. And it's 1080p across the board. So that's definitely a plus. Now let's test the download and upload speeds of the Satoshi Smart TV box.
And as you can see, it's a really good download speed, 18 megabytes per second. And the ping, which is how fast it loads up a web page, is 55 megabytes per second. And the upload speed is 2.55 megabytes per second. So this device is crazy fast, faster than most other TV boxes that I've tested, as well as many PCs. All right, so now that we've tested the download and upload speeds of the Satoshi Smart TV box, let's see how fast it downloads an app from the Google Play Store. Now this is the Twitter application. It's 11.6 megabytes. So what I'll do is go ahead and click on install. And once I click right here, the process begins. And it just takes a few seconds to download. And there you go, it's finished downloading, so it's probably installing just about. It's installing right now. And you can select, each time you download an app, you just select which category. It's done, by the way. So it took about less than 10 seconds to download that application. Maybe more like 5 seconds because we weren't able to actually see the screen when it started and when it ended. It took maybe another 3 seconds to install it. So this device is lightning fast when downloading applications as well. Another great feature about the Satoshi Smart TV box is that it has pre-rooted firmware installed on it when you receive it. So I'll go ahead and launch an app called Root Checker. And this is the free application from Google Play. And you can just go ahead and download this and check and see if any Android device that you have purchased is rooted when you receive it. So I'll go ahead and click right here. And as you can see, Congratulations, this device has root access, so that means that you can install Super User and several other apps that you wouldn't normally be able to use unless the software was pre-rooted. And the remote control that comes with this device is really good for XBMC. It doesn't have a keyboard on it, but it does have this button, which is the menu button, and this button is really useful for XBMC. It's, it's the button that you use to bring up the context menu so that you can add to your favorites. You can also refresh empty repos with this button. You can configure the add-on settings. So this is really a useful button to have. And Satoshi really did a good job in including this button on the remote control. Now let's go ahead and test out how well XBMC works on the Satoshi Smart TV box. And as you can see, the interface is really smooth. I've got a special edition of XBMC called Skintegrate installed. So yours isn't going to look quite like this, but you can make yours look like this if you just check out one of the videos on how to skin integrate your XPMC. So let's go ahead and test out how good XPMC works by using the YouTube add-on and watching one of my videos. Go ahead and load it up, go to search, and I've already got supercharged.os, my name typed in here, so it'll be a lot quicker. And I'll go ahead and scroll down till I find the Satoshi Smart TV box unboxing video that I did about a week ago. Go ahead and launch that one. And we'll check out 720p. See how fast it starts. There you go. Started right up. And I don't want the sound to get confused. I'll turn up a little bit. And you can see it hasn't stopped to buffer, not even once. And it's fairly smooth as far as I'm concerned. Doesn't look like it's having any lag, any problems whatsoever, no buffering at all. And this is in 720p. I'll go ahead and show you, put it on the screen so you can see. 720p. So this device definitely can push XBMC, and I'll just let this spin a little bit more, give you a good look at the Satoshi Smart TV box, which is aluminum, by the way. That's a big plus. This device is very well made, has very good Wi-Fi reception because of the antennas. And I'll go ahead and back out. 
and but as you can see the video is playing fine I know there's a little bit of distortion in the picture because I'm filming it with another camera but it's no big deal the video looks great quality is absolutely wonderful as you can see it's flawless basically all right so I'll go ahead and stop this video and go back and we'll check out a few other details through XBMC by going to system and system info and this gives us a great overview of the device and how it's working while XBMC is running so as you can see right here the CPU usage and the memory used isn't much at all considering the version of XBMC that I have installed on this device has just about every good add-on that there is out there and the, as well as the repos and it's also the integrated version which adds even more to the file so this is a very packed version of XBMC that I have running on this device and it's still running perfectly all right this is supercharged iOS this concludes my full review of the Satoshi smart TV box with XBMC demo I'd like to thank the people at Satoshi for sending me this wonderful device for my review if you guys are interested in purchasing the Satoshi Smart TV box, there'll be a link in the description just below this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please click the like button and also like my page at facebook.com forward slash charged iOS and follow me at twitter.com forward slash charged iOS. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.